he just went straight up and he started telling me this whole bunch of negative stuff talking about how I don't think you're going to graduate from this program just because of my performance for the first four weeks he told me that I didn't do well in his midterm and he didn't think I was going to pass his course if I fail any of the courses he was going to put me on academic probation <laughs> everyone welcome back to my youtube channel thank you so much for joining me my name is nikki aka ada canada so today i felt a very strong inclination to come out here and share my story i felt like speaking to someone even if it's just one person who might be going through a similar situation that I went through if you're an international student and maybe you're probably kind of like experiencing a shift or a shock or a struggle to fit in and to understand yourself then I hope that you find some form of encouragement from my story I usually don't talk about this part of my journey as an international student but I just felt like sharing it today so yeah, this is a story of how I failed in my master's program and I was put on the acad academic probation. The story goes back to 2015. You guys know that I came here in August 2015 and I started school in September 2015. So I came into Canada as an international student and I was going to study petroleum geoscience so it was supposed to be a master's degree in petroleum geoscience and please don't ask me for the name of the school please don't ask me for the names of any of the professors or anything like that I'm not going to reveal any names just for confidentiality purposes but I'm just going to tell you exactly what went down it was like I came into um, Canada and then two days later school started so I didn't have enough time to basically settle down kind of get used to the environment get over jet lag and just kind of acclimatize myself to situation things you know like the way the school setting is the way the foreign setting is I didn't attend any orientation none of that so I was taking four courses and I thought you know Initially, I thought four courses is not going to be a big deal because when I was in Nigeria in my bachelor's degree, I was taking up to about six, seven, eight. There was a semester I took up to 10, 11 courses in one semester. And so I felt that, you know, with four courses, it wouldn't be so much of a big deal because I've done a larger number in one semester before. So I was taking four courses and the first week it was it had already started getting busy in terms of schoolwork by the second week or the third week That was when I realized that I started struggling with school I started struggling with the courses that I was taking coming from Nigeria. I had a particular set of study habits that I was used to that I developed and they became part of me so I was using those study habits and that was what was working for me when I was in Nigeria I you know was excelling in all my courses and in all my exams and everything so I, I felt okay like this is the method that I'm used to from back home this is what I know so maybe I'll just kind of use the same method with this new setting I was wrong because I didn't take time to understand the way the educational system works here in Canada is completely different from the educational system in Nigeria this was where the genesis of my problem started because I was thinking that the two of them were the same or comparable but they're just different and with a change or a shift in educational systems it comes with a shift in study habits it comes with a shift in learning as well and so I was kind of basically just taking transferring all my study habits from Nigeria into this Canadian setting and I found myself struggling I was struggling with school how to deal with stress how to deal with the multitude of tests and assignments that we had to do and we had to submit before deadlines I was basically just kind of getting overwhelmed with the way things were going at that point and it affected me 
I remember I used to spend four to five days a week in the library so I would sleep over because I was living far away from school and I would take the bus and the train I would spend my nights sleeping in the library about four to five nights a week just for that first semester I was sleeping in the library and I would study I would do assignments and all whatnot and I would sleep for a bit in the evening and then I would wake up at night and then I would study again until around 5 a.m. So 5 a.m. I would go back home and instead of like resting or kind of at least sleeping before my next class in the morning at 8 a.m. I wouldn't sleep. So when I got home, I would prepare to go to school for my lectures at 8 a.m. again so it was like this continuous cycle that I started doing and in no time I was always getting tired exhausted because I wasn't getting enough sleep and I wasn't even eating well my study habits were just all over the place my eating habits were what the only things that mattered at that point in time were just church school home I was always doing that every day I wasn't getting enough sleep so my sleeping habits kind of just kind of crashed went straight downwards and it was basically a matter of survival because I was just so overwhelmed with the way things are I was so overwhelmed with the educational system I was so overwhelmed with the multitude of information that we were being um, given including the ones that we had to go out and go find for ourselves like the ones that you have to teach yourself another thing that really affected me affected my psych was the fact that I was the only black person in my class I wasn't the only international student but I was just the only black person and the only African person in my class so coming into that new environment where it's like I'm, I'm the only black person and there, there everybody else around me is white it, it took a huge toll on me because I've never been in that kind of environment before I didn't know how to make friends with my classmates uh, my class some of my classmates started forming cliques of their own like you know people specific people that they talk to or sit with in class but me I was just like a one-man solo person so I didn't have any friends I didn't have any study partners I didn't I didn't have anybody that I could like say okay hey can we study this or hey can you teach me this so i was just basically doing things on my own because i didn't know how to communicate right i i had communication issues basically during my first semester i don't talk in class and i found it very difficult to talk to people some people thought that i was a snob but no i'm not a snob i just had a hard time actually talking to people and you know knowing what to say to strike up a conversation i wasn't very good at that and you know that was just it so so many things here and there were getting to me i started feeling depressed i started feeling overwhelmed i think i've used overwhelmed so many times before but like it started to get to me and it started to affect my productivity at school again i was homesick so being homesick is it's not really a good thing it's not really a good place to be because it affects you mentally I wasn't taking care of myself basically so I was just only like study 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 without resting without sleeping without eating well I wasn't doing very well in my courses so I remember the course that I failed it's it's petrophysics so for those of you who are geologists you know what I'm talking about you know petrophysics right the way that the course was structured was that there weren't any assignments or any tests it was just one midterm exam and one final so the midterm exam was 30% and the final exam was 70% I didn't have a problem understanding concepts in that class when I did the first midterm I did okay in that course I think I had about I think it was 24 25 over 30 that I had in that course so I felt okay I was I was good I just need to like study maybe just a little bit harder so that I can get like you know a better grade or I can like do so well in the exam so that I can get like an A in other courses I wasn't doing so well during the midterm per period petrophysics was the only course that I would say that I did like fairly well in terms of my midterm results my program director was teaching a course I've kind of forgotten the name like right off my head but like there was this course that he was teaching and in his midterm I had 50% so 50% is just like borderline it's not really like you know a good score but it's just like 
you're just one step away from failing i didn't know that our program director at that time was kind of monitoring our progress through other courses and so after the midterm he sent me an email that he wanted to schedule a meeting on the specified date and the specified time i went into his office and we sat down and he started asking me oh how are you doing and i'm like oh i'm i'm fine i'm doing great and then he said that well he's been looking at my performance so far for the first four weeks of the term and he's seen that i'm not doing well and i'm struggling that i'm just barely getting by with all my my grades and he just wanted me to know that he didn't think that I was going to make it if I continued this way he just went straight up and he started telling me this whole bunch of negative stuff talking about how I don't think you're going to graduate from this program he told me that I wasn't going to graduate from this program just because of my performance for the first four weeks he told me that I didn't do well in his midterm 50% wasn't great and he didn't think I was going to pass his course and then he said that if I fail any of the courses he was going to put me on academic probation because the thing with graduate school is that as a graduate student you can't get anything less than a C plus so anything less than a C plus is considered a fail so he was kind of like grading me as someone who was a C student and he never really bothered to like say any kind of encouraging words he never really bothered to like find out or figure out like what's going on are you encountering any problems of any kind is there any way you need help you know that kind of thing he never bothered to ask me any of those questions with that program you can't fail twice so if you fail the first time they put you on probation and if you don't pass whatever course you failed then they kick you out of school i just looked at him in complete utter shock and disbelief like i was just staring at him and my head was spinning and i just couldn't really make sense of what he was saying at that point in time because i was in shock i was in complete shock and you know he just he had this i will never forget he had this smirk on his face as he said it and i remember the first question i asked myself was what is so funny about this situation i was just so shocked that somebody would say that to me one thing i know is that if i was a teacher i would never ever speak to any student like that no matter where you come from no matter who you are and so i asked him to repeat himself just so i would be sure that this was somebody this was a human being that was talking to me and he said the same thing that he said i left his office feeling very sad very dejected i felt like a sore loser the first place that i went to was the chapel i couldn't even hold myself before i got into the building the moment i stepped outside of this man's office the tears came streaming down and i couldn't hold myself back and so i went into the church i went into the blessed sacrament because i'm catholic and i just started weeping weeping is something that comes straight from deep down inside your soul i was like god why did you bring me here to go through this why did you bring me here to suffer why did you let me come here if at the end of the day i wasn't going to graduate what is this what is this man saying when i thought i was done i wanted to get up and leave so as i was leaving the church i was still crying and then i met up with one of the priests who usually um celebrates mass in that chapel and when he saw me he came to me and he started asking me you know like what's going on what's wrong and and he took me into his office we sat down and I was just crying the tears just wouldn't stop and I started thinking about all the possibilities me failing me getting kicked out of school I thought about the way he smirked that you know very tight smile on his face why did God put me here why did God give me the study visa if you know I was going to come here and end up failing right and 
when I was able to get myself together for a little bit, I'm telling him everything, how I'm just a new student, this is my first time in Canada, and I was just giving him the whole breakdown of everything that happened, and he kind of tried to like cancel me, and you know, um, kind of encourage me, provide some form of like words of affirmation, words of motivation, encouraging me to pray. He even prayed with me right before I left his office, so I went home. At the end of the day, I was feeling very defeated, so I was just not in a good place mentally and the next day I continued so I thought to myself well, I would just like power through I would just like study harder I would try to like understand better watch YouTube videos if I could just try to get the concepts just push on past this these courses I wanted to prove to this man so bad that I could make it that I wasn't going to fail any course that I was I was going to do my best and I was going to make sure that I proved him wrong that I was capable of doing it and I prayed believe me I prayed so many times I spent my nights praying but the one thing that didn't change was my study habits so I was still using the same study habits that I I came with I grew up with in Nigeria and I was still not eating I was still not sleeping I was still not resting I would still sleep in the library nothing changed as much as I was praying for success it was still the same habits that were destroying me mentally and also physically during the finals exam the day that I I wrote petrophysics I wrote another course geophysics so I wrote two exams in one day so that's six hours and each final exam is is three hours I used to take a lot of coffee I used to take a lot of monster energy drink that finals week it was like I was experiencing the law of diminishing returns I wrote both exams on a Tuesday so I remember on Monday I went to school to study like in the morning I took my food for breakfast lunch and dinner and I went to school I stayed in school all day i didn't go home i i would rest and maybe like take a nap here and there by sleeping on the chair in the library i never slept on a bed and so i stayed over in school up all night studying cramming all i could cram cram all the formulas all the terms every single thing i was studying for two courses i ended up not sleeping on monday night i only slept for like maybe i think around sometime around 2 a.m 3 a.m that was when i started feeling sleepy and so i slept and then when it was 5 a.m i went home to go shower and come back to school to take the exam and i remember on the day of the exam um, I, I forgot things because I was experiencing brain freeze, law of diminishing returns, like things were flying out of my head, things that I had studied. I was like forgetting formulas and just basically solving nonsense. I remember like one section of that exam that I failed, um, it had to do with calculation and the way that the question was set up was that you need um, the answer to question A before for you to be able to solve for question B and then you need the answer for question B to solve for question C and that's how they just kept like following themselves and so in one of those questions I missed the formula I missed one aspect one variable in the formula and everything just went crashing down like all my answers were wrong and I had written like only God knows how many pages I had written before I realized that there was something off with the way my answers were it took me a while because I was like staring at the ceiling and nothing was coming no answers nothing was coming into my head that was like complete brain freeze I completely forgot like nothing I couldn't remember a single thing in that exam and by the time I got myself to remember what was missing in that formula it was already too late because I had like 30 minutes left I wrote that exam with a pen instead of a pencil and so one major mistake that destroyed me finally for real for real was when I finally figured out the part that I forgot or the part that I made a mistake I went back and I cancelled every single thing that I did because I wrote it with pen I started writing it again all over again from scratch and that was how I wasted so much time in that exam I ended up not finishing the exam and at the end of the day I basically failed the exam so I had a C I had about 1.5 marks just to get to a C plus and pass the course but I didn't pass the course I ended up failing because I had a C in that course the other courses I was just there I think I had like 
uh, B's in that course. So it was just like I had one B plus and then two B's and then um, a C in that semester, which wasn't so great per se. Immediately results were out. The program director emailed me again telling me that I failed a course just like he predicted and he was putting me on academic probation. And so I scheduled a meeting with him. I went to his office and I begged this man. I was like, please, let me take this exam again immediately. I will do well, like I will pass. I know where I did wrong, but I will pass this course. And he said, no, I can't take it immediately. I said, okay, let me take it the following semester, which was winter semester that was supposed to start in January. And he said, no, that the course is only offered in the fall semester. So I would have to wait and stay back an extra semester to take that course in order to graduate. That was like one of the worst Christmases that I've ever experienced because I felt so depressed. I didn't have family, I didn't have friends, I had nobody. And I was just on my own, nothing to do, nobody to like keep me company or anything. I was basically lonely, I was homesick, I was depressed about the fact that I failed. I called my dad and I told him I failed a course. Surprisingly, he didn't really berate me or anything like that. He kind of like asked if you can take it again and I said, well, yes, I have to take it again for me to graduate and this time, this is the only chance that I have to pass that course. The following year, 2016, which was the following semester as well, in January, I because I was still so angry and frustrated about the fact that I failed, angry and frustrated about the fact that I couldn't prove this man wrong that I could pass this course, I was still all over the place. I didn't completely heal mentally, but I just told myself, well, I just have to do this anyway for me to like graduate. I was just feeling like geology is not really for me. You know, I don't even know what I'm doing in this course in petroleum geology. What am I even doing here? But I thought, well, I'm already here. I might as well just finish the course, right? And so because of that anger and that frustration, I wasn't putting so much effort into studying. I switched some things up. I just told myself that I would take a step back from like expending so much energy into my studies without taking care of myself and I would just like be a little more relaxed and the one thing that I know that I did well was I just I just completely stopped sleeping in school so what would happen would be maybe after classes I would go to the library so my classes would end at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. and then I would go to the library and then I would study until 7 p.m. 8 p.m. and then at 8 p.m. I would go home and basically I would just sleep so I would sleep and then I would probably wake up late on in the middle of the night that was part of the new habits that I picked up in terms of studying I was a little more relaxed I was resting watching TV watching a movie just watching YouTube videos just doing things that would make me feel relaxed basically trying to take care of myself basically that's what I was doing and I noticed that within the first month of these new habits that I started doing I kind of started to understand the way the educational system in Canada works. I started to understand my instructors better. I started to understand what my instructors wanted better. I started to do better. That was the semester that I started having A's. So I did a lot better and it made up for my poor results in my first semester. After that winter semester, I did so much much better i did my capstone project and i finished it and i excelled in my capstone project and then i took the course again it's in september just like the program director said i would i wasn't so fussy about the course that's one thing i noticed because it was literally the same syllabus it was literally the same course outline the same notes i would go to class and I remember like the first time I took that course I was always sitting in front this time around the second time taking that course I would sit at the back and leave the junior set so like the set after me to sit in front I wasn't even writing any notes because it was literally the same notes that I had from the first time that I that he gave in you know in this instance that I was repeating the course I was a lot more relaxed and I found that the course was easier I figured out later on that my problem was just stress my problem was that I was just not taking care of myself I didn't have like a very good um, study life balance if that makes any sense so I was only just study 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 but I wasn't making time out for like my mental health my physical health I wasn't resting I wasn't sleeping I wasn't eating 
eating and once I started doing more of those things to try to strike a balance between studying and having time for myself that's when I actually started doing better in school at the end of the day I took that course again it was easy honestly speaking like it was so easy to the point where I was asking myself what was wrong what was so difficult for me to understand do you understand i had 30 over 30 in the midterm and then i can't remember what i had in the final but at the end of the day i had an a plus in that exam and that was how i passed the course and that was how i was able to graduate looking back now i'm happy that at the end of the day i still made it through the fact that I failed that course the first time didn't really affect my GPA because I ended up graduating with a 3.2 over 4.0 GPA, which is still very okay. That's like a second class upper. I mean, with a 3.2 GPA, I can still go back to school if I wanted. I can still get a job with a 3.2 GPA. So it wasn't so bad. I thought that I wasn't going to graduate with up to a 3.0, but I ended up graduating with a 3.2. Although I didn't graduate with my sets, but I still graduated guys i still walked on that stage and i still collected my degree certificate this is my master's degree certificate this is the degree that my program director said that i wasn't going to get when they called my name out during our convocation ceremony i remember walking on that stage and i was feeling so proud of myself i was telling myself this man said i wasn't going to graduate but i'm walking on that stage and i'm collecting this right like it's my name and nobody can take it away from me this part of my story of survival and struggle as an international student there were so many things that i did wrong and i didn't have anybody to tell me some of the things that i've just told you in this story you can pick out the lessons from the story if anybody is watching this even if it's just one person i just want to let you know that what anybody says about you doesn't matter the only thing that matters is what God says about you and what you believe in yourself if people say oh you're just no good or you're not going to pass or you're just not going to do well or you can't do this you can't do that don't worry about them don't listen to them don't even pay any attention because that's just human beings that's just men talking God is the ultimate who has the final say on anything that concerns you i didn't know that god was trying to teach me a lesson i just wanted to tell you whoever you are that is watching this if you're watching this video just don't give up don't beat yourself up so much remember to take care of yourself in as much as you pray for success just remember to put in the right amount of work and let god do the rest whatever people say about you their ideas their opinions don't matter because at the end of the day it's only what god says that matters and that's the only thing you should be concerned about one more thing don't forget to be kind all right guys so this is my story of how i failed and then went into academic probation and then still ended up graduating i hope that you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did please subscribe to my channel to help me grow turn on my post notifications so that you will never miss an upload this is where i have to say bye and i will see you in my next video bye guys